think the ASEAN summit uh, is basically, uh, you know, proving that if you as a region develop this kind of understanding, develop goals, for example, enhancing connectivity and resilience was the major theme of the summit in Laos, then the world at large and otherwise countries and regions that might have disagreed will see you as an opportunity. And I think ASEAN really exhibits that even though we have uh, challenges, there are disagreements in major, uh, you know, uh, aspects, uh, especially when it comes to major powers, given ASEAN's own uh, very uh, committed, uh, you know, uh, perspective on how they want to cooperate together, even uh, countries that otherwise may disagree are coming and moving forward with uh, wanting to cooperate further with ASEAN. So I think this is a very positive message. It gives a very strong signal that uh, we are not in the world where we were uh, maybe in the immediate uh, beginning of the previous Cold War. Uh, we are in a world where regions have the capacity to set the tone for themselves. And at the same time, of course, uh, ASEAN and China have similar common goals. Uh, this was also the 27th China-ASEAN uh, meeting. Uh, we see that uh, now the 3.0 FTA is also in place where uh, the pragmatic goals that the uh, countries together decide for example, they want a green economy, they want uh, help with technical cooperation, they see China as an opportunity. And that is creating limited space for the kind of conversations that some countries had in mind. For instance, creating uh, an Asian NATO. And there is limited and actually almost zero scope mm -hmm. for this kind of conversation in ASEAN. So the ASEAN leadership setting that tone and making it clear that they want to cooperate, they want to continue moving forward in an economic and pragmatic sense. And the, the challenges the region faces are ones that the region can address on their own.